So in this video, I'm going to walk through a few CAPM practice questions to hopefully help as you prepare for the certification exam. Just as a note, if you're interested in more CAPM prep resources or to get access to a free full-length practice test, you can visit projectprep.org. Okay, so here's the first question. Which of the following represents the lowest level in the WBS? The answer here is the work package. So work packages are going to eventually be decomposed later into activities in the define activities process, but the work package, or excuse me, the WBS, the lowest level there is the work package. And the way that I remember is that WBS and work package both start with W's. Which of the following specify the working days that each project team member is available? Okay, the answer here is a resource calendar. So project staff assignments tell us who's assigned to the project, and the resource breakdown structure is just a hierarchy of resource types. So neither actually tell us which working days the team members are available, and that's where the resource calendar comes in. Okay, question three. Deliverables are an output of which of the following processes? Correct answer here is C, direct and manage project work. So that's actually when we get the work done and thus produce the project deliverables. Here's question four. Which of the following is a contract that is most commonly used when the work spans several years? Okay, the correct answer is D, fixed price with economic price adjustments. So these types of contracts, in these contracts, payments may change over time to align with some reliable financial index. That's one of the reasons why it's useful if it spans, the work spans several years. All the following are enterprise environmental factors, except what? Okay, the correct answer is change control procedures. Those are actually an organizational process asset, which are often policies, procedures, or knowledge bases that are specific to an organization. Enterprise environmental factors are conditions outside of the control of the project team, which could affect the project, such as culture or political climate. Okay, question six. All of the following are tools and techniques used in the collect requirements process, except what? Okay, the correct answer is alternatives identification. That's using the defined scope process, which occurs after requirements are collected. Okay, here's question seven. Which of the following processes involves aggregating estimated costs to create an authorized cost baseline? Okay, the correct answer is B, determined budget. So the estimates cost process is similar we use that when approximating activity costs. We then aggregate those costs and create an authorized cost baseline in the determined budget process. So we approximate it and estimate costs and aggregate it and determine budget. Question eight, the scope baseline includes all of the following except what? Okay, the answer here is requirements documentation. The other three are included in the scope baseline. 